Now, this month, I think this, this, this is your month, Minister. The nation has once again awoken to the reality that young people are not getting what they deserve. Um, if at all they're getting anything, it's not adequate. And we saw this come through protests. Uh, we had protests, which, which I know we're going, we're going to detail with that. But let's look at what the protest was all about. Are the concerns from the young people justified? Okay. Once I got in touch with, uh, with some of the youths who were uh, protesting, and I should indicate, Gravajo, that uh, a youth is somebody who's below the age of 35, and not anyone who's above the age of 35. If you look at the protests which we are done on social media and other platforms, I'll tell you that some are not youths. They're just masquerading to be youths. There are some who are protesting, who were youths when I was in primary, who were also youths when I was in secondary. Even now, I'm not I'm above the age of 35, but those people who were youths when I was in primary are still claiming to be youths now. So we need uh, to put in a distinction. Who's a youth and who's not a youth? And a youth is somebody who's below the age of 35. And after seeing that main concerns were aired by so-called youths and youths, of course, we called for a meeting at government complex where about 200 youths attended. I know others have been crying that uh, did not cut across the country. But this was very urgent. Now that was very reactionary from your from yourselves. Mm. It it was very urgent. One youth goes on on, on, on social media uh, and he's got this huge following on uh, around his his posting and suddenly you're calling a meeting within two days. Was that a, was was that a fair the youths, a normal uh, way of doing things? I you mean, you couldn't call a meeting and you, could, you couldn't you have waited you need a more organized meeting. You need to understand that the youths were calling for a protest, that they needed a platform to be heard. And it's our responsibility to create a platform for the youths. If they go on the streets to throw stones and demonstrate, who's going to hear them? No minister is found on the streets. No minister is found in the bush. And there is a is, is, is that because you've grown up or probably been oriented to believe the youths must come to your office? You cannot follow them to the bush. You cannot follow them to the street where they're protesting and protest <laughs> with them because you agree with their, with their cause. <laughs> Grevajo, what will I be doing in the, in the bush? Where Meeting the youth. Where there are snakes. There is uh, a structure which has been created by the constitution of Zambia. My office is a constitutional office. So since it's a constitutional office, I should operate according to the constitution and the defined laws of this country. There's a structure which has been created. That's the Minister of Youth. And under the Minister of Youth, we have other departments as well as other organizations who interact very closely with it. So every youth should use this structure. Remember that when we are growing up, for us to, to when we go wrong, our parents used to beat us as a way of punishment and as a way of correcting us. But now, th we don't beat our children. We engage them. There is a change in the way we approach things. When our parents were fighting for independence, they used to go to protest and go to the streets. But why should youths go to the streets? When there are organizations, when there is a ministry which is responsible for them, why not engage the ministry? Air their views. Look at what they did. We called for a meeting. They came for a meeting. They put across what they needed to be attended to. We compiled that, presented to cabinet. And His Excellency the President, he has started actually responding to the needs which the youths put across. One of them was lack of unemployment. They need to be empowered financially. Yesterday, when the, uh, on, the, on Thursday, when the president was making pronouncements, it did indicate that we have set aside 30 million kwacha for artists. That's not it all. The president is actually looking at other empowerments. 
Because there are many issues which have been raised by the... By the well, before we get into the issues, I, I wanted to address these issues. These, these are the concerns that have come through. There's a group that initially was like pioneering this, this debate, called out the issues. You called a meeting, which was at short notice, and they told you it was at short notice. But you went ahead. And now there's a question, what kind of youths attended your meeting? Were, were, were they ruling party youths? Were they picked from intercity? How did you come up with this group of youths to come and attend that conference? Okay. I need, uh, I need uh, to tell you that uh, we have got the Youth National Sports Council, which interacts with the youth across the country. And when we called for this meeting, the Youth uh, uh, Council, the Youth Council, National Council, looked at the database and looked at the civil society leaders and youth activists who are youths for that matter and not, not someone who's 50 years. Someone who's a youth leading fellow youths. They looked at the database and they made sure that from the Copper Belt, they called in four. From Eastern Province, they called four. From Central Province, they called four. And the rest were called from universities, colleges, as well as uh, other training centers, like skills training centers. And those who are not in, uh, in school or... That notice minister was less than three days. It wasn't less than three days. The communication was done on a Monday, and the meeting was held on a Friday. And you did expect the youth to mobilize themselves from Eastern Province? Yeah, because, uh, because we provided transport. We provided transport. We gave them transport refunds. For those who didn't have uh, transport, we told our provincial coordinators to provide transport. Those who were able to provide transport and made it to come to the meeting, we refunded them their transport cost. By your standards, you would say the meeting was well represented. It was representative of all the, the youths in the country. It wasn't all the youths in the country, but we should... Uh, we but should they, had, they, they had representation. We, we should remember, Gravajo, that uh, the problems uh, faced by the youth in Lusaka, it's similar to the problem faced by the youth on the Copper Belt. Countrywide, the youths are crying for uh, levels of unemployment and inclusiveness in the governance system. Their language is the same. So actually, it's not the first and the last meeting to be held. I should remind you that in March this year, 2020, His Excellency the President hosted an INDA at Mulungush Conference Center. That is just two months ago. And they presented these issues before them. I mean, that was uh, a well uh, uh, representation of all the youths across the country. Because equal numbers was uh, equal number was drawn from all the ten provinces to come and sit with the head of state and speak with the head of state and present their issues. They did present their issues, and these issues is is actually attending to them. That's why, even before they protested, he instructed Minister of uh, Livestock and Fisheries to speed up the process of empowerment towards fish farming. Just fish farming alone has a tune of 29 to 30 million dollars, US dollars. And 30% of that money is for the youths. 30% of uh, 30 million dollars, it's 9 million dollars. 9 million dollars translated into, into kwacha, it's over 70 million kwacha to go into, into fish farming and value addition. So what should the youths do uh, since there is this money. What the youth are supposed to do is to do a bankable document. If they are unable to do a bankable document, that's the reason to why we have got National Youth Council, which will help them come up with a bankable document. It's our responsibility as the Minister of Youth to make sure that we pass on these documents to Minister of Livestock. It's our responsibility to make sure that those youths who are passing through our institution are empowered. If there is a challenge, we engage the youths. We engage the Minister of, uh, of Livestock. Sit down with them and find a win-win situation so that youths are empowered. We should, uh, I should state that we have a deficit of 40,000 metric tons 
of fish in this country. Much of that fish is being imported out of this country. When there's a challenge, there's an opportunity for a business. So you should use this as an opportunity for business. There is already a market, a red market for fish. Why go to the streets and protest? Minister, I, I, I did ask you whether you were listening to the youths. I think you're not. Why do you say so? Because your approach is when the youths cry, throw money at them. And no, it's, not, not, it's, not, it's not working. We are not throwing it's money not at them. We are not because they've protested. Now you tell them, okay, there's 30 million now for you artists. You can go. We've got 29 million aquaculture fund. Well, we've got, but this has not worked from time, time, time okay. immemorial. I mean, yeah. you have and you had the Youth Development Fund. It never worked. This so you is, throw money at the youth. This is, it's this not what they want. This is, this is a wrong notion and a wrong philosophy that we are throwing money at the youth. Remember, you have just alluded to the fact that we had Youth Development Fund. It never worked. Which was being administered by Minister of Youth. That fund was watered uh, a year or two later. Why? Because the default rate among the youths was high. And government said, let's do a visibility study and check why the youths are not paying back. Remember that in Zambia, the default rate is high. Whether be youth or not be youth, the default rate is high. Check the statistics with the bank. But coming to the youths, we did check as government. And we did find that one thing which we are lacking as a ministry of youth is the capacity of human resource to manage the fund as well as the empowerment system. We need to know that before an empowerment is being undertaken or given to a youth, a visibility study should be, do it should be done. It's not one shed fits all. We need to study the challenges of, of youths in each district and every province. If you look at that fund when it was suspended and the default rate was high and we didn't have the capacity. Now you are talking that that money has been taken, uh, $30 million has been thrown at the youth. This man is now sitting with Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries. Why is it sitting with Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries and us we are put to be a coordinating ministry? Why it's sitting with Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock? Because they have the human resource. They have vet doctors. We don't understand fish. But we have individuals and employees in Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries who understand fish. Today as a ministry we we'll sink up fish ponds, buy fingerlings, buy feed for the fish and give them a, a startup capital for them to pay or meet their daily expenses, monthly expenses before they start harvesting and selling. What if in the middle of the process, three months later, before we reach to six months when the fish is ready for harvest, there is a disease in the ponds. We don't have the capacity as a ministry to attend to that challenge. But Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries, they have got vet doctors as well as other employees who are educated in that field. It's easy for them to, to attend to them. And also, it's easy for the ministry to attach certain officers to these empowerment programs. Those officers who act as extension officers in making sure that the fish which is being grown by the, by, by the youths is being harvested, sold out, and the youth should make a profit. So government is not throwing money at them. Look at the... How, how, much, how much work have you done to try and, and remodel the thinking of the young people? They don't want money. They want jobs. You need to understand. I think that's a traditional thing. So it's a cultural you thing, need, maybe. You need, you need, young people have grown up to go to school, get employed, get your salary and not to create jobs it's uh, something I, I mean if you look at the youth development fund you've spoken about it elaborated the challenges and everything that thing has was in existence for almost 19 years uh you the, said the fruits are nothing to talk about and and, and and that should give you a hint of where we're going you give people you will give them the aqua fund aquaculture fund 
How do you expect them to succeed if they don't, don't have the capacity? They are going to. Are succeed. you building capacity? Are those are issues to, you're creating? They are going now? to succeed because this project it's being managed by the ministry, by the lining ministry, which is responsible, which has a human resource. The job of the Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries is to make sure that it equips the youth with skills on how to keep fish. It's not rocket science in keeping fish. You just have, you should just have a business acumen. And you're saying that uh, many youths went to school so that they can have a white collar job. I should tell you, Gravajo, that uh, the main youths who finish school have never been employed, have employed themselves. I should remind you that uh, a week or two ago, His Excellency the President visited the dumping site and we met a young youth who said that I used to pick plastics from this dumping site. From picking plastics, I now drive. He drives, he has built a house, and he has employed four graduates. And he said he is just a grade nine failure. He has got the business acumen, but he needs a, he needs a startup capital, and he also needs skills to help him run the business. So what's our job as a minister of youth? To create a conducive environment, identify such individuals. Even me, I went to school. The first white collar job I've had in my life is to be a member of parliament and to be a minister. I started business when I was 14 years. From the time I was 15, I never knew how it felt to your parents to buy clothes for you or buy uniforms for you. I used to buy for myself. University studies which I've done, I sponsored myself. I wasn't looking for a white collar job. Do you believe though that we still have to teach the young people to go and create the jobs? If that wasn't the case, I mean, your, 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 your money at CEC would have been taken up by now. The 30% would have all been gone. It's not that um, uh, uh, youths need to be taught. We've got youths who are responsible in this country. Who are not accessing and we the money. Feel, yes, and we feel that, uh, and His Excellency has confidence in the youths. That's why you have seen that during his appointment, is appointing a lot of young people. You were defining youth, not necessarily youth. Young people. Look at the political advisor to the president, Mr. Zuma. It's pretty young. We are going towards elections. And if the preoccupation of the president was to win elections, he would have employed someone with the experience of winning someone an election. But because his heart goes towards the youths, he employed someone who has a youthful mind and can relate with the youths and advise the president according to the needs of the youths. So, we have got responsible youths. I'm very sure and certain that we have responsible youths. Had a meeting the other Friday with the youths. I told the youths, look guys, ministry of in the uh, DMMU under the office of our owner, the vice president, is buying face masks. I've got an order for you to produce 500 face masks, 500,000 face masks. And we gave the youths who were in the meeting, each one of them to produce 4,000 face masks. They came to my office on Friday and presented the face masks which they have made. And they were telling me that the cost of producing first mass, 4,000 first mass, was 19,000. I asked them to break down the cost. They said 7,000 went towards the purchase of material. And since some of us, we are not tailors, this is a business opportunity. We engaged tailors who have charged us three kwacha to produce one first mass. Three kwacha times 4,000, that's 12,000. So their total cost was 19,000. They are first selling each first mass for 10 kwacha. 10 kwacha times 4,000, it's 40,000. 
40,000 subtract 19,000. That's 21,000. I mean, uh, 21,000. So it simply means that each youth is making 21,000 in 14 days. That's an opportunity. And we believe in them. If they can do this, I think they are able to do many They can more. do bigger things. They well, can do bigger when you, things. When you listen to the concerns, I think, I think we're probably getting to itemize them. One of the concerns was that their freedom of expression is, is shrinking. And there was a background to that, which probably may not go in. But then you've come to attack them, that they shouldn't have gone to the bush. They should have come to your <laughs> office. When we look at freedom of expression, maybe you should have followed them to the bush, or probably you should have asked them, where are you protesting to? They would have told you, probably, no, we're going to, to, to Heroes. And, and you would have told them, I'm coming to Heroes to address you. Uh, but you decided, thou shalt not protest. Uh, uh, I, I, I heard the St. Michael speaking, holding a placard that we the youth. Honestly speaking, Mr. Zulu, is St. Michael a youth? Are you a youth yourself? That's the question should be. You're running youth, youth affairs and you're not a youth. I should tell you that me, I hold a constitutional office. There is no law in the constitution which states that a minister should be a youth. So according to the constitution, I'm well placed. But if you look at a youth, the constitution defines who a youth is. Or the laws of Zambia do define who a youth is. A youth is someone who's below the age of 35. But there's no law that prevents me, who's above uh, 35, from speaking for the youth. Why should you speak for them? There's no, when law, that, that, there's no law that bars. When, when no law. You've, men you've mentioned a name, and I'll, I'll probably mention it again uh, myself. There's no law that bars St. Michael from speaking for the you young people. He was saying with the youths. He didn't say that I'm speaking for the youth. That was, a, a distinction. was that your biggest issue? Around, there's a distinction. The there's, a di there's a distinction. Those who are purporting to be youths, masquerading to be youths, and youths themselves. I want youths to, to speak for themselves. Because the challenges which St. Michael has and the challenges which the youth has are different. How do you, Many how youths do you hope to below see the youths when you tell them not to protest? You deny them a pen as government. Gravajo, what did you gain from protests? They can deliver a petition to your office. Petition? Why can't they just walk into my office and deliver a petition? Why are dictating the way they should behave? I'm not dictating, but it's if a they, smart... If they're saying it's, we want to come with a petition, why don't you allow them to come with a petition to your office? And you tell them, no, you, you shouldn't bring a petition. I'm going to call a conference. Number one. Then you are talking down number to one. them. And th number th they one. Sh you should talk to, yes. to each one. other with the young people. There's a smarter way of engaging each other. I believe youths are smart. And since youths are smart, they need to use a smarter way of presenting their grievances. What is a smarter way? Engage the person who you think has stepped on your toes in a smarter way. Revival, we should not lose the culture of this nation. There is no way and not a time did we go and stand on top of a hill and shout at our father. You would sit with your parent or with your father and tell him the things which are affecting you. Government is a father to the youth. They need to engage the, the ministry or the government accordingly. In a smarter way. I believe, I've no doubt in who, my who, mind. Who decides what, I, is, I've, who I've, decides what is smart? I've no, I've no, What's I've a smart not, way? I've no doubt in my mind that the youth are smart. And they should just engage in a smart way. That's number one. Number two, those who went to the bush, many of them are not youths. Did you check their following? Yes. On, 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 on social media? Did I you, didn't, I did didn't, you check, their I didn't check their following, but just looking at many of them who went to the bush are not youths. If, if they had a huge following. Number two. Number two, what did they benefit from going in the bush? There are no prophets in the bush. Those who came to my ministry, I've just told you that they have made, each one of them has made a profit of 21,000 in 14 days. Those who went to the bush, what have they gained? They are just being used by politicians with selfish ambitions. Politicians who forget them when they go into office. 
they are just being used by selfish politicians who have failed to go into state house in the past uh, six elections, general elections we have held in this country. We need youths who are going to present their views and engage government in solving their views. Being used by a politician who won't change your status. What you change your status is the way, number one, the way you conduct yourself. Number two, making sure that you achieve what you want to achieve. And what you want to achieve, it's economical independence. What makes you so sure they're being used by politicians? What is, is, that, is, is, that, is that a way of shutting them up? No, it's not. It's not a way of shutting them up. If there is an office, there is a platform which we can use, and the platform has been created for you, you decide not to come to the meeting and you go to the bush. You're just being used by a politician. What will it change? What you're crying for, it's economical independence. You've gone, you've, 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 you've gone into a panic uh, as government over the, the, the issues raised by the youth. No, we've we seen haven't. in the recent past. And, and, I mean, I mean, you called a, media, a, a meeting immediately that the, the, the videos went viral about, the, viral about the youths complaining. Suddenly, we've seen the Minister of Information hold uh, regular meetings with the young people. We saw you with other ministers at the ministry holding meetings to see and empower young people. Now there's a 30 million uh, down for the youths. Now we've also had uh, DMME also announced that 75% of various contracts are for the youth. All these things and... and no, where have they been? It's, I mean, it's, where, where, it's, where have it's, all these it's, issues it's been? It's not I mean, a panic. Remember Grevajo that when it's I... It's a had reaction? No, 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 no. Use a polite no, word. No, no, no. It's, it's not a reaction. It's, it's, it's not a reaction. Number one. It was planned? Number one. I did tell you that they each had a meeting with the president in March. We had youth in up. When was the Aqua Fund introduced? Aquafund was not introduced when this APRO came up. Aquafund was introduced two, three months ago, two, two months ago after the endeavor with, uh, with His Excellency. That's why, the that, that's, that's why the directive was given by His Excellency that 30% should go to the youth. Because during that uh, endeavor, the youth presented their issues. And after presenting their issues, the president did direct. 30% of this should go to the youth. So it's not a reaction. This is something which has started happening. And after hearing that the youths wanted to protest, had to call them to remind them. Remember that we had a meeting with His Excellency. If there are issues which you did not present during that interval, present them now. I take them to cabinet. And after taking to His Excellency, he has already started attending to them. If he doesn't attend to the issues they presented, then what are we doing as government? Our job is to attend to the needs of the people. Let's hear the issues. I, I know you, you had a meeting with them and they, the youth spoke. What did they tell you? They need uh, inclusiveness in the governance system. What does that mean? The way, it's, the it's way, a generic the way, word. The way, the, way, the way you just said that, uh, you asked me a question. Are you a youth? And I saw that on social media. I say, even the minister is not a youth. Even but he doesn't want other people to speak on, on behalf of the youth. <laughs> 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 Those people who are speaking, they are not saying, we are speaking on behalf of the youth. Probably they should change their tongue and say, we are speaking on behalf of the youth. And someone in Gravajo who should be a teacher to your child is, should be someone who has made it in life. Well, that, maybe not, not someone who has been a failure in life to be a teacher to your child. If your teacher failed much, how does that person teach, uh, teach your child? It simply means your child will be a failure as well. So all those who want to speak on behalf of the youth should have a clean record. And should actually be an example. A role I, I, model well, I, I wouldn't want you to cast, to cast aspersions on any one of those. I know you are not mentioning names, but well, you wouldn't like that to be to be said about you. And and probably wisdom is not a preserve of all those only those that have succeeded. Let's get back to the issues. What were the issues that the youth raised and and told you they wanted addressed? Number one, 
levels of unemployment that we should um, we should create jobs for them number two empowerment and even when we explained the empowerment programs which are going around in these ministries they were missed they said they they didn't know about the empowerment so as a ministry we are thinking of ways and means of making sure that we send this information. I was even telling members of parliament when we are looking at the issue of empowerment of youths, when we were considering a report uh, presented by the Committee uh, of Sport and Youth Affairs, I did tell the members of parliament that the way we use these youths during our campaign even in times of empowerment, when we have empowerment, ministers bring ministerial statements to this chamber, to parliament, to inform the nation and members of parliament of empowerment programs which are going on. Let's take that energy also. Let's take up the energy and disseminate this information to the youths of empowerment programs which are going around in, in the country. I should state that I did launch the empowerment of buses, Iga buses, after being repaired. We, up to date, we have just empowered five groupings. And we still have 15 buses. Despite going to the radio, despite coming to the TV, and it was a news item on ZNBC. You need to change your approach, Minister. Like, like I said earlier, it means you're not talking to the youth. We are. How can you give the youth 15 buses and only five show up to pick them up? We are doing that. It was a news item on ZNBC. You're not talking to the young people. We are talking to them. You, you, we are talking to them. You you're should, not to, you're you not, should, let, me, let me change my question. You're not speaking with them. You're talking down to them. Uh, and you've left them behind. So you, you, you announce uh, all these nice projects and the youth are not coming. And then you also are surprised that the youths were amazed that they don't know that these things exist. It's an indictment on your office. You failed to. It's not that you we failed to engage the young people. It's not that we are failed. That's why you are there, Grevajo. That's why the TV station is there. That's why the radio stations are there to disseminate information to each and every person in this country. Grevajo, it's unpractical for me to speak to six million individuals. Even in one year, it's unpractical. Just calculate how many hours you are work. You are outside your house. Basically, they are under fourteen hours. If you divide those hours in thirty minutes, speaking to an individual, it simply means that you are going to speak to twenty-eight people. If you are going to speak to twenty-eight people. It simply means that in a month or in a year, 28 by 360, 64 days, you cannot speak even to 1 million individuals. Minister, so there is a Minister, system. You, you've got structures in, in provinces. Mm -hmm. uh, and my point, the point I'm trying to drive home and trying to drive at you is that if you offer food to hungry people and they don't eat it, there's a problem. We have got structures within the provinces. We have got structures within districts as well. We are using those structures to send this information to the young ones. And that's why we are encouraging, I should use this platform to encourage young ones to make them themselves available to the ministry through the National Youth Council the National Youth Council, at the moment, it's creating database of all the youths in this country in conjunction with Smart Zambia. We need to create a database of all youths in this country. If they have got phone numbers, what we'll be doing now, once we create that database, whatever empowerment program we have, we'll make sure that we'll send a text message to, that, to those youths. And it will be a smarter way and quicker way of them receiving the the information. If 
someone receives the information and do does not apply, you can uh, take a donkey to the river and you cannot force the donkey to drink water. Youths have been complaining, Minister, and I, I don't know if you, you attended or you've been briefed the minister, the, 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 the meetings that uh, was there held with the young people. Some of the issues were that there was lack of clarity on, on the location of these resources. But if there is a lack of uh, clarity, why don't Almost suggesting unfairness in the way these resources are, are located. And I've seen a, a lot of youths, and, and if, if, if you follow them on, the, on their pages on, on social media and everywhere, they do not seem to trust you as government. No. They, they seem to think you only tend to reward cadres, that's young uh, people in political matters. <coughs> that's a political statement. And if youths want uh, empowerment, should not use political statements. They should not speak their when, mind. They should, they should, they listen, should only listen, speak listen, the language that listen, is listen, uh, admissible. Listen, when the, president, when the president hosted an interview, he called youths from MMD. We called. We invited youths from MMD. They participated. We invited youths from UPND. They participated. We invited youths from FDD and other political parties. They participated. If we only aligned ourselves as government to, to youths of the Patriotic Front, we wouldn't have called those youths from other political parties. But we called them. Which simply means this is not a ministry for PF alone. It's a ministry for any youth who qualifies to be a youth and is a Zambian. So if they think certain uh, things are not going accordingly, or they need clarity about certain information or empowerment, they need to write to the, to the office. We've got structures within the ministry. We've got the director who's in charge of uh, youth affairs. He's called the director of youth. We've got uh, assistant directors, there are two of them in the ministry, who helps the director. We have got uh, senior officers under youth department. Even in the province, Provinces, ten provinces. We have youth, uh, provincial youth coordinators. Are these are so, are so all what, these what, structures, what, Minister? Are they telling you the youth are not happy? No, but some youths are happy. It's are, not they, that are they telling it's, you? This? It's it's not that every youth is not happy. Quite well, a number. Well, of well, well a, a big number, not happy. No, if you say a big number and you refer to that protest by well, no, I, by I didn't I didn't people. talk about the protest. If you calculate and look at the numbers of the unemployed youth. No jobs, no income. That's a, that's quite a big number, isn't it? So, so th th those those can't be happy youths. So if you have got a youth who has no employment, and this youth no income. Has, 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 has done economics, uh, this youth understands the economies, the economics of this nation, and that youth is able to to understand and interpret the economics of this nation the economics of this continent and can come up with a business. Come up with a business plan. Let's discuss is, is, is about that business simple? plan. Is it that simple? Any youth can wake up and say, well, I'm going to start a business. I was, I was with one youth today in the office who's producing face masks. She has said, I've taken advantage of this pandemic to make money. Her name is, uh, is Mercy. And and she's actually on American Embers Facebook as one of the youths who's trying to make it in this time, in this difficult time. She has employed more than 10 tailors. She started with one tailor. But looking at the demand of Festmas, she has employed tailors. She actually told me that, you know, I'm having sleepless nights. I'm even working in the night to make more money. She tells you, me you, that you, you are singling out these, 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 these maybe I would call them successful, some of them through hard work, some of them uh, through luck, maybe some of them through uh, their own effort, I know. But then there's that huge group of young people you need to speak to today. Gravajo, it's not through luck. It's through hard work. No, no sweet with, comes without sweat. You are working. Why are you working? You want to earn a living and look after your family. That's the reason why you're working. 
If you stay home and be on social media, I can guarantee you, your family won't have food at home. So I'm not only speaking to those who have made it in life. It's not by luck that they are making this money. Someone who's having sleepless nights to produce face masks, about 8,000 in a day. She produces 8,000 in a day and she charges 24,000 quach. So she's making 24,000. She's saying, I'm having sleepless nights. I mean, it's, it's not being lucky. It's being a hard well, work. Let's, let's, let's take that out. And the, youth, the, youth, the youth did ask you to create jobs for them. So what are you doing? We, it's under discussions. We're trying to create jobs for the youth. And a good number will be created. We are looking at creating over 10,000 between now and December. You need to understand that we were in the hard times when businesses has, have shrunk. Many businesses which were doing well then are not doing well now. Why? Because of this coronavirus. If you look at, uh, at uh, Southern Sun Hotel has closed. You look at Pamoz Hotel, it has closed. You look at Intercontinental Hotel, it has closed. And this is a global phenomenon. It's a challenge which is, uh, which is being faced globally. So we cannot make more than what we can. But we are looking at making jobs. The youth also talked about uh, what jobs are we going to create. A youth comes on the table, those who have been to school with papers from school. A youth does not come with experience. We do understand that. We do understand that uh, there are some youths who have done hospitality business and, and lodges are closing, hotels are closing. These youths, why don't they open up eating, eating places? We are there to sit with them and develop a business proposal. There are quite a number of youths who have got restaurants across the country. They are making it. If some youths, let me go to this uh, uh, before time runs, runs up. Some youths are talking about uh, mining, that the gold issue and all that, they're not being, uh, they need to have a benefit. We are busy developing uh, a concept node my minister and minister of mines. The concept not we are developing is that we want to, to put youths together, those who have done mining engineering. Of course, you, are, you cannot take everyone to the mine. Those who have done mining engineering, those who have done accounts, those who have done marketing, those who have done um, metallurgy, we want to put them together. Of course, we want and to give them licenses. No, we are not giving them licenses. We want to to take them, obviously, uh, attach them to some big mines, maybe for three months or so. So why don't you give learn, them a, a learn, license? And listen, and listen, listen. Learn how to do business. I'm a miner. I do business. My major business is mining, and it requires huge capital for you to run your own mines. Look at Kalumbira when it was being set up. It required $2 billion to start that mine. It's a huge requirement. But what we want to do is, once this team is up assembled, advise them to, to open a company. Once I open a company, we will link this company of youths to ministry, I mean to ZCCMIH to start mining gold on their behalf. Let them open up a mining consortium. Their job will be to mine gold on behalf of, uh, of, of, of ZCMIH. At a later stage, if they grow their capital and they know the corners very well and how to do mining and conduct business in the mining sector, they can apply to Minister of Mines and get a mining license. No one is prohibited from having a mining license. I had my first mining license when I was 21 years. No one prohibited me from getting a mining license. So no one and no law prohibits a youth from getting a mining license.
Let's look at, uh, well, that's a good idea. Then, I, I, I guess uh, you, need, you need to, that is not yet publicized. It's the first time you're speaking about that. Yes, because we are, we are working out a business concept. And we have invited, by the way, we have invited youth. If they have got ideas, they think we can, can be put on the table to be considered when we are developing these business concepts. They are free to come to the office and put the ideas across on the table. There's 30 million for artists only it will be administered by the National Arts Council. How this is, will this work? Our job is to provide the uh, leading role. Youth should come to our office. Once they come to, the, to our office, do business proposals. We'll pass on that, uh, those proposals to to Ministry of uh, Tourism and Art because National Arts Council sits under the Ministry of Tourism. Why is it being put under Ministry of Tourism? This needs to be understood, although it's uh, youth empowerment. Ministry of Tourism do have the human resource, do have people who understand uh, music very well, do, un do, do have people who understand whether what is being put across by, by the youths is going to yield fruits or not. Me as a minister or my ministry who look as at it as just empowerment. We can give any youth who, come, who comes across, but uh, National Arts Council do have a database of these musicians, and we want to help these musicians, not anyone who masquerade to be a musician to get that money. That money is meant for, for, for musicians who are youths. Is it only musicians? What about others in, in other categories of art? Uh, Filmmaking? Obviously, even those will be, will be considered. They just have to put up a good case. Visual arts. Even, even when you're getting, Mr. Zulu, when you're getting money from the bank, the bank won't give each and every individual. The bank will give the money to someone who puts up a good bankable business proposal. Is your focus on musicians because uh, this struggle by the youth is being led by a musician? No. no. The focus is not uh, on musicians. The focus is on every individual. Once we finish those uh, uh, concept notes I'm talking about, the president will launch them, or the minister will launch them. And you see to it that uh, it's not only musicians who are being tackled or being empowered, it's everyone. At the moment, we are looking at engaging youths in, uh, in, uh, in desk production. Because His Excellence, during the time he was opening uh, parliament, he did indicate that uh, and direct ministry of uh, of education not to import this but to buy from youth owned enterprises so we have engaged the fico this project is going to empower about 6000 youths we have engaged the fico to make sure that we buy logs from them when we say we as a ministry to be a startup capital given to the youths youths will be buying logs from the fico other youths will be producing timber. Other youths will be producing desks to supply to Minister of Education. So we are not just looking at musicians. We are looking, looking at, at, looking at it. I was talking about this 30 million. Is it just musicians? Other artists are also in there? Uh, that 30 million is for all the youth artists. Let's look at the governance. I, I know we're running out of time. Two issues. The, min the, the, the president did direct you, direct you to take leadership. In, in ensuring there's a multi-sector manner in guiding the youth to benefit from various government programs, which you probably also have uh, itemized, meaning your leadership has not been very visible, I suppose. You've not really been pushing the young people to access <laughs> these funds. That's one of them. <laughs> Second one, governance. Mm -hmm. I think the issues have raised that issue. The youths have raised that issue of governance. You can deal with that together with the issue of corruption. I guess it's the same. Um, leadership in the multi-sector approach? To, to you need to understand that uh, in every project, there is a leader. In every institution, there is a leader. In this uh, institution, uh, uh, ZNBC, there is an MD. In every ministry, there is a minister. So the president has put ministries together to attend to this challenge of the youths. Then when he says that, take up the leading role, 
is just making it clear for argument's sake that I've put these ministries together, headed by ministers, at the same level, but I want this one to take the leading role. Why? Because I understand the challenges of the youth and I interact with them every day. It doesn't mean that the youths are not hearing me. It's just putting different ministries together. And so giving you the leadership. Address the issue of, uh, of governance. Young governance, people um, feel they're not part of the governance and you, the, the elderly, have taken all the roles, all the front seats. Uh, you need to understand, uh, Gravajo, that uh, um, uh, His Excellency the President has tried his best to include young ones in the governance system. I talked about Mr. Zuman coming to, <coughs> to our political party. Quite a number of youths have got key positions. One of them is our provincial chairman, where I come from, on the Copper Belt, Mr. Nathan Chand, is below the age of 35. And is the one leading the party on the Copper Belt. So His Excellency is trying his level best in that manner.